So all of this going on now, in, in the midst of all of this, Iblis is still silent and his way of looking at this is that, no, um, I, I, should have, I should have had all of this, all right? Now, of course, Allah is putting Iblis to the big test. And then he says to the angels, he says that, I want you to then bow down to this, to this creation that I've created. But this bowing is not the bowing of shirk or assigning partners to God. It's the bowing down because God has given this particular creation such great qualities and Allah has said that you should then now show it respect. So it's the bowing of respect, not the bowing of worship, right? So, and, and this was all, of course, for the, with the knowledge that Allah had that Iblis is burning there, he's standing there, he's burning inside and he's watching all of this. So the, so the angels, they all went down into prostration, all of them went down into prostration. When they were in sujood, Iblis was standing up and he didn't go into sujood. Now, what we learn here is that when you sin, when, when anyone sins, it's not the nature of the sin itself, but it's the one whom you've committed disobedience against. Right? So if you were to look at the nature of sinning or the nature of disobedience, you would say, well, all disobedience is the same. So why is it then that for a disobedience that Iblis did, God or Allah Azawajal said, you get out of here, you're outcasted. And for a disobedience, or we won't call it disobedience, but a mistake that Adam salam made when he ate from the tree, Allah Azawajal didn't just, you know, banish him for good. He gave him the chance to then repent and then he accepted his repentance. Or when one of us makes a mistake, is different from that. Why? It's because Iblis, you've got to understand what is happening here. It's a nature of you've disobeyed. Okay, you've got to look at who you've disobeyed. That's one thing. And you've got to look at when you've disobeyed, how strong is the case of your disobedience in terms of who, you know, the, the scenario. So for example, let me give an example. If, for example, somebody was, um, let's say somebody was, um, they, they had something illegal on them. Let's say somebody out there has got a bit of drugs on them, right? Now, He's got drugs and what does he do? He puts his drugs right inside his pocket, right? inside pocket. And he wraps it around, you know, seals it in, inside a polythene bag. Right? He puts, a, puts another polythene bag around there. Then he puts some tape around there. So in case some police dogs come and they sniff him, maybe they won't be able to sniff that. So he puts it in his pocket and then after that he closes his you know, jacket and then he zips himself up. And he walks as if he's got nothing to do with anyone. So now, of course, he walks down the road and there's a copper car or police car coming, you know, the other way. Now he's not looking, he, you know, see no evil, hear no evil. All right. He's just walking, you know, he don't want to know. And if a copper pulls him up, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to try and, you know, have a conversation to try and get out of trouble without him being caught with the drugs. Now that's what anyone would do. And even if he had it in his boot of his car, he's going to make sure that he's sealed it properly. And if a copper pulls him up, he's going to be as nice as he can to the copper just for him to let him go and he can get away with his drugs. Now imagine um, there's a, there's a, this is one scenario. Imagine another scenario is that a policeman happens to walk by and the, and the person who's got the drugs opens his jacket fully open like that, yeah? And he's got the bag stash of ash showing there and he's basically got a gun there in the other, in the other one pocket and he's doing this in front of the copper as the copper's walking by. Now that is different from the first place. The man had the same amount of drugs and the first guy might have even had a gun on him but it was all hidden and he doesn't want to use it, he's got no intention and he's just you know, going from A to B and he doesn't want any trouble. The second one is displaying his, his goods and he's trying to say, yeah, yeah, you want to do something about it? Now come on man. So now you can see straight away what the crime is going to be now. If the policeman in the first instance was to catch the person with the drugs, and the person says, oh, please, you know, uh, I, I, you know, if he starts to lie and he says that, look, I don't know how he got in there 
uh, uh, act, of course, he, he actually was my mate's uh, uh, drugs. Uh, and you know what, you know, and, and if he doesn't get away with it, he said, look, come on, it's just a little bit. Just let me off. Just give me a fine. Don't, don't send me to you know, jail for a night. Don't, don't do that. And he pleads guilty. Then that seemed differently than the second person who might do that and say, and then when the policeman says, what's that? He goes, yeah, it's Ash. You want some? It's Ash. You know, like, yeah, and I've got a gun here as well. You know? It's like, come on, you want trouble? Now, straight away, you can, you can already start, you know, writing down, you know, or noting down what's going to happen. The second one being so challenging. Now, when you look at Iblis and the crime he was doing was, number one, he is having a direct conversation with Allah. Musa alayhi salam, out of all the human beings, only Musa alayhi salam got that, right? Adam alayhi salam got that in Jannah, that's fine. Musa alayhi salam got that on the earth, right? Uh, the prophets got that through wahi. Some of them got that through speaking directly. It was like Musa alayhi salam. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam got that in Mi'raj. But all the other prophets got it through sort of wahi, through sort of some kind of inspiration. The only ones you can say that were there directly in front of Allah and his presence or speaking directly was either you could put Adam alayhi salam perhaps in there, but then some say that it wasn't Adam alayhi salam, even then it was Wahi. The only person by, by the Quran you can say who spoke directly is Musa alayhi salam from all the people, from the Quran. Only in Hadith we find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi speaking to him in Mi'raj, even then that is debatable and so on. But the one that is consensus that from the jinns that spoke to Allah directly was Iblis. He spoke directly and he was straight, conversation after conversation. He said something. And if you look at his rudeness, how rude he was to Allah, that shows how much the crime is. Now, going back to the principle about the one who you disobey, that is the reason why when, when Allah puts someone in Jahannam, when Allah puts someone in, into hellfire, you've got to understand that it wasn't, you know, and the, do you look at Jahannam, you know, there, there's iron rods, there's metal hammers, there's snakes, there's scorpions, there's fire, that's, there's heat, there's, you know, burning skins, there's screaming, there's molten, you know, uh, sort of probably iron, there's, there's uh, boiling water poured over the heads, there's brains that are boiling and so on and so forth. And the person, what he might have done is committed a zina, he might have committed something else. So you say to yourself, well, why is it that he committed such a sin and then God then, you know, punishes him to such a level? But this is where the ulama say that it wasn't the sin itself. You've got to look at the one who you've disobeyed. So what we should be fearful of from this is when we, are, if we sin, and we are all human beings, don't forget, look, look at the hadith. The hadith says, Kullu bani adma khata'un. Every single child of Adam, every single, you know, all children of Adam, they commit mistakes. Wahayru khata'a The best of those who make mistakes are those who come back to God and repent. Repenting is coming back to God. So for our sins, we should repent and, and, that's, and we have a hope that Allah will, will forgive us. Now, Iblis lost his hope in God. He became distant from the mercy of God. He lost his hope. Now, that's where he gets his name Iblis. Because one of the names, of, one of the meanings of Iblis is that he has lost his hope in Allah. Another one is Ibad and Rahma, which means that God made him move far away from his mercy. And the different, you know, uh, meanings of, of, of Iblis, depending on how you look at the etymology, etymology of that actual um, name itself. Now, when, when he's standing now, Allah then, you know, there are various parts of the Qur'an. Allah addresses Iblis and he says, Ya Iblis, Iblis, ma man'ak an tasjud lima khalaqtu bi yaday. He says, oh Iblis, what has prevented you from bowing down to something which I have created with my hands? Now what, what Allah is reminding Iblis here is, Iblis, doesn't matter what you're, what's going on in your mind right now, this creation has been, end of the day, is not your creation, it's my creation. And anything that Allah attributes to himself automatically becomes blessed. So for example, the Kaaba, we say the Kaaba is the house of Allah, not meaning that Allah lives there, but Allah said, this is my house. Allah's attributed the house to himself. So that house becomes a blessed house. When Allah says, for example, um, like the, the, the month of Muharram is my month, month of Muharram becomes a blessed month. When Allah says that uh, Makkah, 
or something, you know, he attributes, or like for example, the, the camel of, of, of Salih, the camel that Salih has he asked Allah to bring, and Allah says, Hadihi naqatullah, this is the camel of Allah on the earth. Fadaruha takul fi ardillah, says let it let it graze and eat from the from the earth. When Allah attributed that camel to himself, it means that that camel became blessed. It means that's a pure camel, it's a blessed camel, it's a divine camel, it's something that Allah has given a status to, and you must not dishonor that. Because whoever dishonors that, then they will also be dishonored. Allah will dishonor them. Because it's showing that, you know, when when you have if if the if the uh, president of a country send a letter. And for you to even take that letter and to tear it up, you know, that's, that's, you can tear as many papers as you want, but to tear that letter up is, is a big crime. It's from the president himself, it's from the queen herself. So the same thing, Allah is reminding uh, Iblis saying that, I created it, I created this creation. So what has prevented you from, from bowing down to this, to this creation that, that I created? Now, Iblis, then says, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal says, um, Astakbarta. Now this is in Surah, Surah Saad. The one in Surah Saad we have, Allah says, Astakbarta. Have you displayed arrogance? Have you sought to be greater? Astakbarta would mean, have you yourself sought to be greater than the thing that I have made great? I have said that this one is greater than all of you here. Greater than the angels. Great, no, knows more than the angels. Knows more than you as a jinn. So in other words, who are you to, to say that, you know, to even, even uh, imply that there is something great. I've just told you that this is greater. Astagbar, are you showing me, who are you to show me that you've got more greatness than the thing that I've called great? Okay. Am kumta min al or are you seriously from those who are already in a higher station? Which means that either you yourself have, you no, know, you're trying to prove that you're greater, or you have got a higher station from before. And who would give you that higher station? Except for me myself. So if you were really higher than that, why would I exempt you from even bowing down? I haven't exempted you. So there are three different places in the Quran that Allah addresses Iblis of why he hasn't bowed down. One is in Surah Saad, which I've said. Another one is in Surah Al um, Al Hijr, and in Surah Hijr we find again similar words but different. And each one will give you a different sort of aspect, and each one will teach us a new lesson. So in that one, what we've learned is that. Sometimes human beings even, they may themselves think that I'm greater when you had no authority to do so. Or you might think that you've got a higher station, but you've got to look at the one who gives and blesses a higher station and not you take it for yourself. So uh, that's one. Now, another one we've got, the one that I said in Surah Al-Hijr is, Allah Azawad, now this is in um, ayah number 26 to 44. You can check that in Surah Hijr. And we've got to study these ayats a bit more because the main thing that I'm trying to do in this, in this uh, series is the lessons that we can derive from analyzing the Prophet's lives. So it's not just telling you the story. So I could go on for weeks on one story, but I'm going to carry on pinpoint, inshallah, with the, with the help of Allah, the different, many different lessons that we can derive from them. So here, when Allah Azawajal has created um, uh, Adam, he says to him, Ma laka alla takuna ma The first one said, Ya Iblis, O oh Iblis, why haven't you bowed down to something I created in my hands? And the one in Surah Hijr says, What's wrong with you? Malaka, what's wrong with you? That you haven't become, that you haven't bowed down like those who have just bowed down. So here there's, there's a direct kind of admonishment that there's something wrong with you. What's up with you? Malaka. And the one in Surah, Al, um, Surah Araf, uh, Allah says, Ma mana'aka. What is the thing that prevented you from prostrating to, uh, prostrating to the thing that I've ordered you to prostrate? Now, three different paths, three different things that Allah said. Now, Allah doesn't have to mention all three of them in one place. He tells us two, three different things, three different surahs, because each surah context 
will will put that particular ayah into its own theme. Every surah has got a theme. And depending on the theme, Allah will select his words. And if you look deep in the Quran, you can see the connection of that with the surah itself. So for example, if you look at Surah Sa'd, when Allah said, said Ya Iblis, Allah said, Allah said, I created from my own hands. And this is something I've given a, a, a prestige to. The theme of the surah, if you look at it, is when Allah, in Surah Sa'd, you look, you look at from one end of the surah to another end of the surah, it's about Allah himself giving, making something blessed or making a person blessed. So he starts the Quran and he starts to talk about um, uh, Dawood and he says, look how blessed I made him. And then he starts to talk about Suleiman and says, look how, look how many things I gave him. And then he says about Ishaq, Yaqub and um, Ibrahim. And he says, Inna akhlasna hum bi He said that I made them completely subservient to my worship. Meaning that look how blessed I made them, that I completely chose them for my worship. For my, for my servitude. And then he mentioned just before that, Ayyub alayhi salam. He said, look how blessed I made him that so many, so many things I gave him, but he still was remembering me and how much sabr he had. That's how blessed he was. Then right at the end, he talks about Adam and the blessed man Adam. So here, Allah is saying that all is in, I can make, the, the, the point of Surah Sa'd is that I can make whoever I want blessed and you've just got to accept it. You've got to accept and don't show me any, any arrogance or any other height in front of that. The one in Surah Al-Hijr, when Allah said, Ya Iblis, ma laka, what's wrong with you? Allah takuna min sajin, sajin. Here, the emphasis is on the wrong itself. So if you look in that surah, you will find the wrongs of people when they have gone about. For example, the surah opens up when they're mocking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Allah is, you know, it's a wrong that they're doing. Then after this, he, he, talk, he quotes about um, Iblis and Adam. After that, he talks about the wrongs that they did in their thinking about Lut alayhi salam and his daughters. When he, when he presented his daughters to him and they said, you know that we don't want your daughters. What do you want, what do you want with your daughters now? The focus there is on the wrongs of the inside of the person who's disobeyed. So that's why Allah addresses it that way. And when you look at Surah Araf, it changes again. It says, Ma what prevents you? So then it's like you are prevented by something else. It's, it's, you know, you cannot do a good because of an evil that is in between you and the good. And if you look in that surah, Allah talks about, you know, Iblis's many different tricks. And he talks about the people who were not able to get close to Allah because of others around them. Others around them or things and beliefs they had in their head. So over there, it's about the obstacle in between. So Allah's addressing Iblis saying that, Evil can come either because you created it. So this is again a lesson that we're learning guys. Either evil is because you created, you made something in your mind that you shouldn't have done. Number one. Number two is that you yourself, there's something wrong with you in the sense that you have got, you know, you, you've created some something in yourself which you shouldn't have or yourself with other things you had like with Iblis's case it was that he was looking for that position himself. And that was something wrong he shouldn't have done. He shouldn't have made himself think that I'm going to get a position when Allah didn't promise him a position. Right? And when it comes to the, th- the third one is that when we come to us do a certain thing that is wrong, Allah is saying that something perhaps is preventing you from do- doing that and we need to focus on ourselves. What is that thing that is preventing us? Now here Iblis gives his answer. So in Surah, Al- um, Surah Al-A'raf, Iblis says to the question God said, What's, what has prevented you? Iblis says that Ana Khairum Min, I am better than him. Now that is an offense, a big offense. Standing in front of the Lord himself and saying that I'm better than him. It's like that guy, you know, like, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> you want to challenge me? So he's now directly challenging God and saying that I'm better than him. In, if you look in um, Surah uh, Al-Hijr, again, he says the same thing, that I, you know, I'm, I'm better. He says, I am, I've been, he, gives an, he gives an answer. He says that, Khalaqtani min nar, in both the surahs, and in fact, in three of them, he says that you created me from fire, yet you've created him from earth. And that's the reason why I'm better than him. Now here, Iblis has just, he drew, he drew an analogy. 
The analogy was that you look at fire and you look at earth and fire is better than earth because if you look at fire, fire has, ha, heats, heats up, fire rises. And because fire rises and earth is something that goes down, the one that rises has to be better than the one that goes down. This is the logic of Iblis. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he commented, this is in Ibn Kathir, he commented and he said that Iblis was the, was the first one to draw such an analogy and he made a big mistake. You can draw analogies, that's fine. But when you draw an analogy, you've got to look at it from several different angles. If I'm going to say that I'm better than you, I've got to, I better take my, if I, if I say I, I means me completely. And if I say him, then it means him completely. And I've got to be able to draw the analogy from both sides and look at every facet of the thing. I can't just look at one aspect. Okay, that is true. That fire goes up, earth is something that goes down. Gravity pulls earth down, fire is something that blasts up and the heat rises. So for, for Iblis, it was like, well, heat, well, that, that whole thing means that I'm better than him. Now, the ulama have mentioned in tafsir that what a fool he was to say that. Because earth itself has produced. If you look at earth, it produces something. Whereas fire destroys. Fire can give you heat. You can derive some energy from it and you can be warm around fire. That's fine. But the nature of fire, if you let it go on and if you let it spread, is that it's going to destroy. But if you allow soil to go on, you've got a softness to the soil. You've got many different qualities in the soil that, that the fire doesn't have. The, the, the earth can bring you produce which the fire cannot do. And the earth itself is humble. Allah has said in the Holy Quran, that um, I have made the earth something which is, you know, humble beneath your feet. So walk on it. Allah said that about earth. So it's a quality about it that earth itself is humble. Out of all the four elements Allah has created, wind, fire, water, earth, earth, earth is the one that has got the humbleness to it. So um, to, for Iblis to have made that analogy, he was wrong. Again, and there are many other things Ibn al-Qayyim al, al and others have mentioned. In Ibn al-Qayyim al, al in his tafsir, he's given 15 different reasoning to that logic being com completely unacceptable. The logic of, of, of uh, Iblis, that he's better than, than, than Adam. And the other thing is that, don't forget that Allah had said that he has made Adam noble. He has given that. Now when Allah says that, so automatically Adam a.s. becomes noble. He hasn't said the same thing about Iblis. So for Iblis to think about this, it w was completely wrong. Now, one other thing is that Adam uh, um, Iblis in now challenging God, saying that I'm better than him. He said, now this is one of our stars, Sheikh Naim, he said this. He said, one of the biggest crimes, if you look, if you want to go deep down to jealousy and arrogance, because ulama have said that jealousy and arrogance are the main two pillars of most of the sins that come out. But if you look at the root of both of them, you find one word. If you look at the root of jealousy and the root of arrogance is one word that sums all sins and the nature of sins up. And that word is what? Can anyone tell me? Anyone tell me? No hate, kibber, no. Anyone? Sorry? Pride, no. The, the root of pride. The root of envy. The root of arrogance. No. Anyone? It's in his words. He said, Ana khairu min. I am better than him. The root of all of this is I. It's selfishness. It's self focused. It's, you know, that's self thing that we have inside us that me me i that's that thing is the root cause of many of the sins i'm not saying it's wrong to say i and me but you've got to be careful how much focus and attention one has on himself or herself uh, british telecom did a, a survey of the most used word in telephone conversations about 20 years ago and they found out that the most used word in the language, and this is in any language, is I. I. I this, I am. Yeah, I'm all right. I, I went there. I, went, I, 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 yeah. And the ulama have called this ananiya. Ananiya means the, the problem of I. The problem of I. 
which is that every human being, and of course jinns as well, but let's just talk about human being. Every human being, one of the biggest mistakes they make unknowingly, and this is in the subconscious mind, unknowingly they make is to put a lot of importance to themselves, to themselves more so than others. And without realizing it, they're already making these assumptions. They're making assumptions, they're making analogies, they're making um, I, you know, pre, pre, presumptions, they're, they're making thoughts and ideas, they've got prejudice. What's prejudice based on? Prejudice based on I. It's like, well, I am different from him, he's different from me, I is white, he's black. You know, I is better, he's not better. You know, uh, this, this I, I, it, the prejudice comes from that, racism comes from that. It's like I, my nation, all of us are better than them. It's I. If you look at all of them, it's I, 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 I. It's me, it's, it's I'm better. And that is the root cause of most sins. So Iblis summed it up in his, in his words. He said that, Ana khayru min. And Sheikh Naim said also to us that he said, three words, three words, Ana khayru min. I am better than him. In, in English, it might be five words, but in Arabic, it's three words. Ana khayru min. I am better than him. He said it took three words for Iblis to drop from the highest of the ranks he had with the angels right down to the bottom of those who are cursed until the day of judgment. It took three words right? that he, he, he said these words. Now, it doesn't finish there because you know, there's a lot of analysis that, that, that need to be done here. And I'm going to take my time, guys. I don't care if, you wanna, if you're here to get forward in the story. I'm not going to do that in this, in this episode. Because there, there are plenty of those on the YouTube. A lot of shuyukhs have done this. But my whole thing is that the lesson that we can derive from this. So as many as we can derive, uh, and I'm going to do that. And however much we can, we can focus on the actual words itself, we're going to do that. So um, the conversation is at the, at the middle of um, this thing about him challenging now, saying, giving his reasoning now that he's better than, than, than Adam. So.